Yeah, YouTube. I'm I'm back. I guess I guess this is a this is a back comeback. Uh, so it's the Bravi Tri Race Report. Uh, I don't have any footage, so it's all this pretty face. So I'll I'll be super quick with you. Plus I've got to get to work soon anyway. The lead up obviously has been a wild journey uh, since the last race report, being hit by a car or a van. Um, lots of cruising months, enjoying some holidays family time, friend time, and other things other than swim, bike, run. Plenty of surfing and traveling, and really enjoying it. We'll skip to race week. We found a van online the week before, put a deposit on it, booked flights to Sydney, flew down, bought a van, and drove it back. A little bit crazy, but I love it. It's sick. Um, McCann and I wanted a van for a while, and we spotted this one, and it was ticking all the boxes, so, We've got that. Hopefully we'll do some van stories and traveling to share with you all. That was my week. I did no training all week after not doing much training. Basically all I'm doing is for cycling. On Wednesday, I race Wednesday Worlds at the Gold Coast Cycling Club. And then on the weekend, I'll go for a big loop of four, five, six hours, something like that on my roadie. Because I'm yet to get a TT bike uh, from the insurance company, uh, still not approved that somehow, even though I was hit by their client's car. Um, still working on that one, hopefully get that soon, because I've been entered into another race by Cliff Bar. So I'll tell you about that one later. Um, for running, what I've been doing is, on a Tuesday I'll go for a long-ish run, finishing with a little touch of speed. And then on Saturday, I do park run um, after a long-ish run as well. So I'm only doing two hour or so runs, and that's it. And my other running is running up from my place to snapper and swimming back as my swim training. So not a lot, and I'm really enjoying just training a bit cruisier and enjoying doing what I like doing because I don't actually like time trialing hill reps or intervals, even though I've spent 10 years doing it. It's probably why I don't like it. I enjoy it when I'm with a group, but I've been training solo since 2019. So it's uh, almost four years now, training by myself, self-coached in my triathlon areas. Um, I've also left most of my jobs and I'm only working at Tweed of mornings. So I've got afternoons off to hang out with Michaela and train and do other things as well. So it's great. Um, we get to the race. Um, I got there super early. It was nice and relaxed. It's a little uh, small club vibe. Um, and I've done it before, a couple years ago, I think, or a year ago. And it was great. It's this nice technical course. And that's why I've done Bribey without a triathlon bike is because there's so many turns and everything. And I figured I wouldn't be as a, much of a deficit on a road bike compared to a TT bike because of this. It was a little bit wrong, but it is better than a straight course out and back. Um, hoping to get a TT bike in time for a straight course that's coming up very soon. Um, so we got there the day before. I picked up my TLR race wheels. Um, Colin put them on the bike for me, got all that set up. And the bike looks sick when it's nice and clean and with the race wheels on. So I was pretty confident. Did my little warm up activation session and everything and went down to where the shorter course, like the enticer was starting and asked an official, I was like, oh, there's a long course starting here, up there, where's it going? And they're like, oh, you're way up the point. So I had to walk a kilometer up to the swim start. <clears throat> As we got up there, there wasn't any turn boys. So we were just doing our warm up thinking that we were gonna start in the water and just swim in a straight line all the way to the swim exit. Um, and then as we're getting the race briefing, um, a rubber ducky brings a turn boy up the beach to us, but not all the way to us. And we're like, oh, all right, right here. So we're standing in front of it on the shore. And then the race start guy brought us up maybe 150, 200 meters. I'm not sure why. We were all expecting to start like a deep water start, like standing in the water because for about 50 to 60 meters, um, it was knee deep. Um, and I also almost got bitten by a crab in my warm-up swim. Um, as I've stroked through, I've almost hit the crab, and it's like gone ah, and had a go at me. So that was I was a bit cautious of hurting a crab or getting hurt by a crab um, in the swim. But 
uh, as the the start went, um, I remember it's it's like burnt into my brain uh, watching everyone at Noosa one time that everyone ran up the beach out to the point and swam straight across instead of swimming out against the sweep and against the waves and they just got minutes on on us in the swim. So crazy. So that's seared into the skull of my head. Um, so I did that. So I ran up the beach about the 150 metres that they moved us from where we were going to start. and did in line with the boy, swim out to the boy and I got a great head start which I needed because I haven't been doing a lot of swimming after my shoulder. Um, I didn't know where I was at. So I've done that and got a handy little lead. I was quite puffed and settled into my own tempo, which was really good. This was kind of what I wanted. I've been enjoying doing my own tempo swims rather than hard intervals. Um, I'm also not swimming in pools anymore because I don't like chlorine at all. It's actually quite harmful for the human body and I just put up with it for a while. Now I'm not. Um, doing everything I can to refuse swimming in a pool, I'll swim in the creek and the ocean as much as possible. Uh, about halfway through the swim, Nick and uh, Michaela Nessa passed me and another guy was on my feet or just off and before starting because the turn boys were moving around while we were starting I asked the race um, starter I guess he, he is I was like how many turn boys do we have to swim around like how many will be out there because we could only see one we couldn't see any further and we had to swim past the bridge um, he was like there's just two and everyone else heard it he goes there's just two turn boys swim around those and head in so we get to the second turn boy um, on Nick's feet and we turn in to go to the shore. Um, I can't see anything because I'm on a splash and I just know we're heading to the shore after we turn. We get onto the shore and I couldn't see the swim banner. We're running up the beach and we saw it and then Nick's seen the turn boy, a third turn boy. And it was really confusing because we were told there was two so we're like, oh, maybe they just put it in the wrong spot. Maybe that was for some other race. We had no idea. So then while we're running up the beach, we spot that and then so we swim back out to it and back in. So we swim further. We swim one point, almost 1.2 out of a 1K swim because we come in and then swim back out and then come back in. And we were still the first two out of the water. Jumped on the bike uh, in front of Nick because he had to take his speed suit off. And then had a great start on the bike, enjoying all the corners after doing all the crit racing that I've been doing. And then I get to this corner at the back of the course. Um, there was cars on course as well. So I was behind the car and we're heading into this roundabout and I could see a family of ducks crossing the road after it. So I was so concentrated on not running out the back of the car and not hitting the ducks that as I've come around the roundabout quite a bit of speed thinking I was going straight because there was no um, U-turn or turning sign at all. I thought we were going straight. I then see the witches hats across the road and absolutely shoot through them, miss it, turn around and then Nick gaps me and takes off. So I lost the lead there. I should have known um, part of the course, whatever. Had a great next couple laps um, with the other boys catching me. Uh, Tom flew past me and I feel so bad because I forgot the name of the other guy who I rode with for a small fraction of time on the last lap. Um, I had a raspberry gel at the start of the bike and a citrus cliff gel at the end of the bike with a little hit of caffeine in it to just give me that oomph for the run. I felt really good. I was nose breathing most of the bike, staying well controlled, knowing that I could probably run outrun the rest of the guys probably uh, we got onto the run Tom takes off in the hurry so I chase him down uh, we put in a solid 320 for the first K and a half and then we got to the turnaround point and a little gap opened up so I was like oh yeah sweet I'll seize my chance and I'll just crush his soul and we'd take off um, and I couldn't hold the speed so then at halfway through the second lap pretty much right at the turnaround the second lap Tom catches me and we run together for the end of the second lap and the start of the third lap, which is the final lap. And then on the way back as well, we're cruising, sussing each other out. I was nose breathing most of it, knowing the sprint was coming, getting so excited for it. Um, we averaged 3.33 for the run. Uh, so we were cruising enough and just waiting for the sprint rather than trying to hustle and run 3.20s the whole time. Um, so it was good to do a technical little run and run with someone else as well, be pushed along. And then with about six or 700 meters to go, Tom attacks, and I thought it was a bit early. I didn't have the leg speed either to go with him, so I went my own version of a sprint, and I saw the gap opening, opening, and then 
stop opening and then start closing in the last 150 meters. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't enough. And I come in maybe three seconds behind him. Um, but happy to finish in third. Uh, really happy with my performance. He really enjoyed it. So grateful that we have all those roads closed, semi-closed for us, and the locals are really appreciative, which is quite nice because it's not something I'm used to. Um, but Nick, myself, and the guy whose name I can't remember all got disqualified um, because we come in after the second boy, as we were told to do. Unfortunately, the ruling that we are disqualified is that because we exited the course and then we made forward progress before re-entering the course and then swimming further than the course, we were disqualified. Even though we did what we were told to do, we left the course and then entered the course after making forward progression. If we had have realized there was a third turn boy or were told there was a third, boy, third turn boy, we wouldn't have made that mistake anyway. But then what they said we should have done is once we realized that we came off course, run back to where we exited the swim and come back in and swim back around, that didn't even enter my mind because we were told there was two turn boys. Um, end of the day, the official's word is the official's word and there's nothing I can do about it. I can protest if I wanted to, but it'll cost me $100 and it's no point. Um, we would have been great to know the course. We didn't. So we asked and we were told the wrong answer and then that's why we were disqualified after reacting to the wrong answer we were told. Um, obviously stuff happens. Um, it would have been great not to be disqualified. We had enough of a gap between fourth place and it wouldn't have made any difference in the outcome of the race at all because we actually swept further than what we needed to which is a real shame to start back racing with a DQ after my last race was a DQ for the same thing, turning around where I was told to turn around and run when it was the wrong turnaround. Um, it's the only thing with little local races is that the officials don't always know what's happening um, and we're meant to. And then if we're not sure, we ask and we get told the wrong thing, which really sucks when you're trying to make a little bit of an income out of it and do it professionally for sponsors and everyone else. But it's, it is that, and I'm just really happy to be racing again and feeling really good. So next up is a race I've deliberately never done before because it sounds absolute hell and horrific. And that, of course, is Hell of the West. Um, Cliff Byron, a major sponsor of that, and asked if I would like to race in that race as a Cliff athlete, and I said, yes, I don't have a TT bike, I don't handle the heat well, I don't like being away from the ocean, and it's the race is out at Gundawindi, it's about six hours drive straight west of where I am right now, in heat, we swim in murky water, and it's a 40k out, 40k back bike, so I'm hoping that insurance gets their stuff together, they're able to get me that bike that their client broke by hitting me a van, with their van. And I can race on a TT bike and feel quite comfortable. I'm going to race this race in my own comfort zone, not be pushed too much, but with a $21,000 prize purse, I'm going to be pushed well outside my comfort zone. So more to come on that at the end of March. Hopefully I get there, hopefully I'm able to race and have a good time. See you guys then. I may even see you guys sooner because I'm racing a trail race this weekend at Hins Dam and going to try and win.